What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a special episode of Versus. Because in this episode, we're not just doing one blaster versus another, it's another group comparison. And that group is the heavy gunner. What is the best nerf or foam flinging heavy gunner out there? So to find out, let's start off with defining what is a heavy gunner? What role does that really fill? For the sake of this test, we're assuming the heavy gunner is fully automatic, just laying down lanes upon lanes of foam, or in Boomco's case, plastic and rubber. Ammo conservation, the ability to move quickly with your gear, not even relevant. A heavy gunner plants up and just spews foam all over the place. Of course you can adopt a different definition, but for this video, that's the definition we're going to run with. So to find out which blaster reigns supreme, we're going to compare a few different elements using a super snazzy graphic. Ammo type, or what type of ammo it fires. Capacity, how many darts can you load ready to fire without having to replace a magazine or do anything else. Battery type, what type and how many batteries are required for it to function. Weight with batteries, that's simply how heavy it is. Rate of fire, will it go pew 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 or pew 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 pew. Reload speed. If you need to fire more than your capacity, how long does it take to reload it? Horde control. How many zombies can you slay if you fire a lane into a horde? And average chrono velocity. So now that we have the elements that we're going to measure, let's introduce the blasters. First, the Rhino Fire. The Rhino Fire shoots standard elite darts. It comes with two 25 round mags for a full capacity of 50 rounds while operating on 6D alkaline batteries and coming in at a weight of about 3.1 kilograms. Next up is the Hyper Fire. The Hyper Fire also runs on standard Nerf Elite darts and has a capacity of 25 rounds with the included drum mag. It runs on four D style alkaline batteries and comes in at about 1.8 kilograms. Next up is the Boomco Colossal Blitz. The Boomco Colossal Blitz uses Boomco darts, of course. It has a whopping 72 round capacity, runs on 6C style alkaline batteries with a total weight of about 2.5 kilograms. Next, the Nerf rival Nemesis. The Nemesis runs on rival rounds, of course, has a capacity of 100 rounds, and will be tested with the Nerf rechargeable battery pack. With that pack, it weighs in at about 2.4 kilograms. Now, the Nerf Mega Mastodon. The Mastodon uses Mega Darts, of course, has a capacity of 24 rounds, while running on 6D style alkaline batteries, and it has a total weight of about 3.4 kilograms. And lastly, the Dart Zone Dart Storm. The Dart Storm uses Dart Zone darts and will be tested with those, but it is compatible with Nerf Elite darts as well as other aftermarket Elite style darts. It has a capacity of 40 darts, but like the Nerf mags, you can change out different chains and actually extend them, so that's a flexible capacity. But that's included, so that's what we're using, and it runs on six AA style alkaline batteries, so weighing in at a very light 1.4 kilograms. The next test is rate of fire, traditionally measured in rounds per minute. For this test, I filmed myself firing the capacity of the blaster and then used that figure and the total time it took to calculate the rounds per minute so I could standardize every blaster over that rounds per minute for fair comparison, even though you couldn't realistically fire that many rounds per minute because of reload time. The Rhino Fire achieved a rate of fire of about 186 rounds per minute. The Hyper Fire was measured at about 241 rounds per minute. The Boomco Colossal Blitz scored about 307 rounds per minute. The Nerf Rival Nemesis achieved about 325 rounds per minute, pretty quick. The Nerf Mega Mastodon just missed 200 rounds per minute at 199. And the Dart Zone Dart Storm scored a very sluggish 145 rounds per minute. Is faster always better? No, but if you're a support gunner, yes. When you're firing full auto, it's not a steady beam like a laser beam. So if you're moving and you have a faster rate of fire, you have a denser dotted line on your target, if that makes any sense at all. Obvious downside, you blow your load faster. Which brings us to the next element, reload speed. This is to test the downtime in the battlefield of your blaster. After you deplete your capacity, how long will it take you to refill? This is where the test gets subjective because I allowed magazine powered blasters to be fed with a fresh magazine. Compared to a built-in loading system like the Mega Mastodon, you have to load that by hand because there's no option to have a separate turret to just interchange. Is it a super equal comparison? Not as much because you do have to buy extra drums, but the support gunner is going to do that anyways because they're just pretty much holding the trigger down for the entire round, or at least they should be. Otherwise, they're, they're not fit to be a support gunner. To measure this one, I just measured the time it took to reload. Believe it or not, that's how you measure reload time. First, the Rhino Fire. 
Reloading the 50 darts out of two magazines took 5.22 seconds for a pretty quick reload speed, as you'd expect from a magazine system. Next, the hyperfire. I reloaded the 25 round drum in 3.17 seconds. Next, the Boomco Colossal Blitz, which I'll use time lapse for. I don't know that tune well enough. Rid it do. I was able to reload the 72 round capacity in two minutes, 20.2 seconds. Pretty quick. <laughs> Not at all. Next, the rival nemesis. I was able to reload about 100 rounds in 22.26 seconds. Next, the Mega Mastodon. Like the Boomco Colossal Blitz, it doesn't have an interchangeable magazine system. So I was able to reload the 24 rounds in 36.09 seconds. And lastly, the Dart Zone Dart Storm. I was able to reload the 40 dart chain in about 8.08 .08 seconds. That is reload speed. Keep in mind, again, it's not terribly fair. Built-in loading systems like the Boomco Colossal Blitz and the Mega Mastodon aren't as easy to reload. But then you have something like the Rival Nemesis that doesn't require mags, but it's also super, super fast to reload. And you don't have to pay for extra magazines like you would with the Rhino Fire. But that category is now finished. Next, we're up to Horde Control. How easy is it to slay a big horde of zombies kind of coming at you in their zambi way? That's me trying to walk like a... Zambi. Just, okay. On to the test. <laughs> For this test, we have a few cups who volunteered to be targets. Yeah, they volunteered. I have their consent forms on file, bro. And if all the cups are defeated, there's also the Zambi Strike inflatable and a blaster board re reactive target. So let's see how the Rhino Fire does. Pre-rev. Nice, the Rhino Fire has scored a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up, the Hyper Fire. Elite darts suck. And for that performance, the Hyper Fire scores a boo. Like, like a crowd going boo. Next up, the Boomgo Colossal Blitz. And for that performance, the Boomco Colossal Blitz scores a thumbs up. Next up, the rival nemesis. Front sight activated for sniper status on a heavy gunner. That's overpowered, bro. Let's do it. pretty close. <laughs> In a class of its own. Holy balls. And for that performance, the nerf rival nemesis scores a 10 out of 10 wood bang, like a gong. Next up, the Mega Mastodon. And for that performance, the Mega Mastodon scores a Meh. And lastly, the Dart Zone Dart Storm. Oh, come on, there we go. <laughs> Wasn't even aiming at that one. Oh, come on. Okay. How am I putting it in, in between all of them? 
It was like perfectly in between them. <laughs> and for that performance, the Dart Storm score is a one out of five needles. Get it? Like thread the needle? I don't even know how that happened. So there we have the scores on the unified, you know, comparison measure. -ing. But that's the end of the element horde control. Onward to the chrono velocities. The chrono velocities, which I use on my channel quite a bit, measures the initial velocity of the dart right out of the muzzle. However, it's really only fair to compare one blaster to another if they're able to fire the same projectiles. In this category, we have all sorts of projectiles, and the characteristics of their velocities are different in each category, so it can't be transferred over to effective range or accuracy or really any other unit of measure, so I'm not really sure why I'm sharing it, but I will. First up, the Rhino Fire with an average velocity of about 71 feet per second, firing Nerf Elite darts. Next, the Hyper Fire averaged about 74 feet per second. Those both compare to the Elite Par of about 70 FPS. Moving to the Boomco Colossal Blitz with an average of about 61 feet per second, which is a little hotter than the Boomco standard. Next to the Nerf Rival Nemesis, averaging about 102 feet per second with the rechargeable battery pack. Next, the Nerf Mega Mastodon averaged about 78 feet per second. And lastly, the Dart Zone Dart Storm averaged about 95 feet per second. That's both with the included Dart Zone darts as well as Nerf Elite darts. That gun shoots super hard. <laughs> so just like the Horde Control units, it's really difficult to compare these. They're just kind of numbers and stuff. So that's it for the objective information. Well, my horde rating was so not objective, but whatever. I mean, transitioning into opinion mode. My personal opinion on the pros and cons of each blaster. Starting out with the pros of the Rhino Fire. The tripod is cool. Pros of the Hyperfire, it's small and light. That's only a pro because it's really not in the right class of support gunner. <laughs> Boomco Colossal Blitz, pros, capacity at 72 rounds, and it has a selector switch, allowing you to move off of support mode into, you know, semi-auto mode. If you're the support gunner, obviously, semi-auto should never be used. It's full auto all the time. Next, Rival Nemesis. The size and freedom of the ammo. You can store a whole bunch of them in like a cargo pocket because they don't have to be in a magazine or a loading system outside of the blaster. Also, the capacity at 100 rounds. To the Mega Mastodon, the pro, Mega, but yeah, you know, that's bigger. Bigger's better, right? Yeah. <laughs> and lastly, the Dart Storm. Pros, Chrono. 95 FPS is super hot. That's like a modified Nerf Blaster. Under the Rival Nemesis at 102, of course, but again, darts and balls don't really compare. Also, it comes with chains. It's off the chain, bro. Yeah, I had to use that joke. I mean, I had to, come on. Chains are freaking cool. Practical? Maybe not. Who cares? Shut up, you're asking the wrong questions. You're the support gunner. It's not about practicality. It's about spewing foam and being intimidating as Chains, especially with the, the super, super long one, it's super cool. Those are the pros, onto the cons. For the Rhino Fire, it's the mag block. You can't just fire out of one magazine at a time while, for example, you're reloading the other. It's all or nothing. As I wind about in the review, and at some point I should just get over, but I won't. <laughs> To the Hyperfire, there's no BAMF bonus. There's no tripod, there's no chains, there's no nothing else cool. It's just kind of there. Yeah. To the Colossal Blitz, a big whapping, it should be in bold con, reload time. Oh my gosh, it's so obnoxious to reload this thing. But next, the rival nemesis cons. Not applicable, mm, lel. Yeah, not even kidding, bro. It, it's just the perfect nerf gun. <laughs> next, the Mega Mastodon. First, the ammo to carry extra on your body is super bulky because it's mega. Also, the reload time is super slow and takes a while. There's nothing to quickly throw another mag in or anything. And lastly, the dart storm. The rate of fire is the biggest con in my opinion. It's pretty slow for a support gunner. Sure, you don't blow your whole load super fast, but sometimes you want to because it's fun. <laughs> also, the included darts are pretty bad. They're inaccurate and, I mean, they're just like Nerf Elite darts are almost possibly worse. But it's worth noting they are compatible with Nerf Elite darts and waffle head darts or anything else that's just like a Nerf Elite dart but everything was tested with the default ammo to be somewhat fair. That concludes my awesome chart. Aren't those graphics cool? Yeah, bro. That took some time in Photoshop. <laughs> I didn't say fancy. I said cool. It's, it's simple. It's minimalistic. Just deal with it. Shut up. <laughs> so that is all of the data I've collected on the support gunner roll. Now to my personal top picks. I say personal top picks because this is just my personal top picks. If you want to pick something else, go for it, bro. However, if you dispute my number one, you're, you're pretty much objectively wrong and you're just going to have to deal with that. Number one top pick, the Nerf Rival Nemesis. Other than like emergency backup pistol, this blaster will win every single category you could possibly think of, except for um, like post EMP gameplay because it's electric. But what is the value in doing anything without electricity? How boring. <laughs> But the rival nemesis has awesome capacity, full auto, pretty high rate of fire, but still very quick and easy to reload. You don't have to carry extra magazines if you don't want to, or you don't have to. 
Guess you could carry them. You could carry chains with a nemesis if you want to. Just don't ever use them. I should just stop now. That doesn't make any sense. Why did you even say that? And unlike a lot of the blasters in this category, you can hit whatever you were aiming at because it has rival accuracy. But if you're not just about, you know, war practicality and the efficiency and being awesome at this game and you don't want the rival nemesis, my number two in the top pick is the dart storm. My reasoning is balancing the intimidation factor of the super long chains, especially when you can just link a bunch of them together and they sell them separately for like a reasonable cost. So you can just link a bunch of them up. I kind of want to like build a backpack to dispense it over my shoulder so I can just fire lanes for days. Practical? Probably not, but it's freaking cool. <laughs> and also the crazy high chrono average of 95 feet per second. They shoot hard. Accuracy with the factory darts is pretty bad, but you can get waffle head darts, throw it on in there, and it shoots well. And seriously, intimidation. Just intimidation. Yeah, bro. Honorable mention, the Boomco Colossal Blitz, because when you're firing it, it's super fun, and I love the selector switch. But as far as the reload, it kind of ruins the experience of shooting it. But Boomco darts have their advantages over other darts. They don't really have many advantages over rival rounds, but, you know, as far as dart comparisons go, cool. So I totally get if some people really dig that one. But again, those are just my top picks. You can have your own. But that concludes the super long versus episode of which is the best support gunner. Coop, you forgot that. Those are the ones I have. Those are the main primary ones right now. And compared to the rival nemesis, it doesn't matter what you're comparing it to. The rival nemesis wins. Too long didn't read. So it doesn't even matter if I forgot anything. My top picks wouldn't change based on function and efficiency. Nerf rival nemesis. Bamp bonus. Dart zone. Dart storm. And them chains though. I kind of want to get some of those chains and wrap them around my rival nemesis and have bust of both worlds. Woo! I can even build chain armor. Like, not chain link armor, just chains wrapped around me. <laughs> Getting off topic, I should cut it off now. That is the episode. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you think something is truly better than the rival nemesis, let me know. But that concludes this episode of Versus. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, bros, stay tactical. Wow. Super long video.